welcome to On the Shelf episode number 38 of Brutal Battle. I think this is our last On the Shelf for a little bit. After this, I think we're doing a pack attack. Yeah. The one we're very excited about. Uh, should we tease it slightly? Should sure. we tease that? I mean, you already are teasing it. It's going to be four sour beers. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. It's a it's a pack of four sour beers, and literally that's all that's in the yeah, pack. Yeah, it's a small t- pack. Yeah, it's like a baby pack, which I wish breweries would do more of, because that's a great way to try a lot of their stuff that's different. So, but anyway... We're not doing that right now. That might be the next one after this. We are finishing out our On the Shelf at the moment. We have our first beer being something we barely ever have on the pod. Uh, You don't really see it that often. No, you you really don't. It's not very popular style. It is a brewery that we have a lot of respect for. So I wanted to pick it up because A, it's different, and B, we like this brewery. So we want to see how they do this particular beer. And then the second beer is... Uh, I don't want to say, like, something that's been done a lot before, but um, it's more common. It's a sour beer, and the fruits in it are on the more common side, yeah. but um, never had that brewery before. That's a brand new brewery for this podcast. So, something exciting to differing levels for both of these beers. Yeah, let's get so, into it. All right. So, the first one is called Chessie's Girl. It's a wee heavy ale done by True Respite uh, Brewing, and they're out of Durwood, Maryland. Is that really? That's what it says on the can, Durwood. Durwood. Yeah, I'm, I didn't even know it was a place, but sure. In Rockville. Close to, I but, guess. Yeah. But yeah. Um, we've been there before a few mm-hmm. times. We enjoy the place. We've had some beers from them that we've really enjoyed, including uh, one of my favorite hazy IPAs ever, Week Away. They do such a good job on that beer, uh, and they're... Their logger series had been amazing. Yeah, their animal. That bear. Yeah, bear. Their bear one was amazing. So anyway, this is the Chessie's Girl We Heavy. It's 9%. Oh, wow. Well, We Heavies, you know, they're typically higher in ABV. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this is. 16-ounce can. Both of these are. as is common. All right. So... A lot of the times I feel like from Wee Heavies, but it's also been, mind, mind you, it's been a long time since we've had any. Uh, I remember that I would typically get a lot of kind of like brown sugar notes from Wee Heavies. I don't remember the last Wee Heavy I've had. I smell alcohol coming off of it, uh, I'll be honest. Well, it's 9%. I know, but um, yeah. I mean, obviously this is going to be a super malty beer because that's, right. that's what Wee Heavies are. They're just like malt heavy as, as all get out. Um, it's brown, yeah. brown, real brown, kind of red, like reddish around the edges. Yeah, I can see that. the uh, The head to it is very like light brown, like mm. light beige type deal. There's a decent head hanging out on it. It doesn't smell boozy. Yeah, why was I? Why was it smelling boozy when it was coming out? It smells real light and crisp. Yeah, it actually does, especially for nine percent, and it yeah. is. Uh, very malty, obviously. Yeah, very malty, and I'm definitely getting the, I am getting brown sugar. Yeah. I don't know if you just, that's just because you put it in my brain, or. It's very strong brown sugar, but it's very nice. It's it's also just got that, like, nice, super malty sweetness to it in general. I'm getting a little, like, straw or hay as well. Yeah, and I get, like, a touch of honey in the the Mm -hmm. nose as well. Yeah, And there's a slight fruit. I'm trying to figure out what that is. It's very, very it's faint. Like a dark cherry. Yeah, I could see that. Plum? I feel like I get a slight plum in there. Stone fruit, if you will. <laughs> no. We're not doing that. We don't we don't do that. There are plenty of podcasts who have been doing saying that just as a catch all, and uh we don't do that. So That's funny. I took my first sip and I am perceiving some plum. Yeah. Totally. I like this. This is good. And I don't know where you were smelling the booze. I don't taste the booze at all. I would never I guess this is 9%. Yeah. Well, I will be honest. After You're getting my, a little tickle? My second sip. Okay. I, I am. Only. Yeah, I'm perceiving it a little bit more. The first sip is primarily focused on sweet. Um, I do agree with you. I am getting that plum in, yeah. the, in the flavor. I, I do feel like I'm getting the dark cherry you were talking about in the nose as well. Uh, but definitely brown sugar to it. It's good. It is good. It's 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 very. I'm. I took a second sip and like. It's good. I'm still 
not believing it's nine percent. Well, yeah, it, it definitely does not come. I off would it. say like seven, seven, seven and a half, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah, it's got like a, a nice slight fruitiness to it. It's got a nice like malty slash brown sugary sweetness to yeah, it. This is really tasty. It's pretty balanced, and um, it is very light, mm. but it gives yes. you a lot of dark flavors. Yeah, definitely, like. Yeah, it coats your palate with those darker flavors, so it feels like it's a little more viscous. But when you're really paying attention to how it is, it is light, too. And it is a little bit crisp and refreshing. Yeah, it's which is weird. It, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It is weird. Okay, I think I'm on my third or fourth sip, and I'm getting, I'm perceiving a little tickle. Yeah, yeah. But it took a while to get there. It'll sneak up on you a little bit. This could be a dangerous beer for people. Oh, yeah. Um. But I think it's well done. I really like it. I like it way more than I thought I was going to. Yeah, you. that was the beer that's been in our fridge. Yeah. <laughs> and you've just been like, you've just consistently been like, because I'll ask, I'll be like, which ones do you want to do for this this on the shelf we're about to do? And she's like, not that one. She just continually is like, not the Chessie's girl, <laughs> not that one. Because she's never excited about it. So it is pretty awesome that. And yeah, here we like are. It. Last two beers for on the shelf. But that's the thing. That's why you pick beers like this yeah. up because you don't know. Like it's yeah. been a long time since we had a wee heavy. We trust True Respite, and that's why take a chance. You know, yeah. maybe you'll find something you like that you don't typically drink. So yeah. good, good job, True Respite. Good job. I like it. We both like it. All right, now the second okay. beer, new brewery to the podcast. It is Abbey Wood, and they are in Baltimore. Made in Baltimore. And this is, is this the one that they're brewing out of a garage? I think so. Yes, I think so. This is what the guy at the liquor store told us. Yeah, so if this isn't true. We don't know. It's yeah. it's not. We didn't do any research. Yeah, right, right, right. We were just, this, we're passing on something that was said to us. Yeah. Um, it is Passion Orange Guava Vice. It is a sour ale with passion fruit, orange, and guava. It's seven percent, which is pretty standard for a sour. Um, it's got that like Miami Vice look to it, and it's made with lactose. Oh, okay. um, did you say the ABV? I missed it. Seven percent, seven, which okay. I said is pretty standard for a lot. Yeah, of I mean that's the same as every Dewey Secret Machine. Yeah, it's always seven. And Abby Wood, it says on the can, was established in twenty eighteen. This is the first they're time we're out of a garage. Is that, mm. Maybe that's me. Maybe, is this? Maybe that's not the one they were talking about. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's interesting. But okay, sixteen ounce can again. We're gonna get into this one. I guess maybe. I've oh. never even heard of them though. Oh, I didn't. Ro- I didn't roll it. Oh, hopefully there's. I have been trying to do that lately, but that eh, should be all right. You shouldn't have to. It doesn't say to doesn't do it say. on here. I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't say to do it. So. Yeah, so, no, we didn't, we shouldn't have had to. We'll find out. Okay, we'll see. Hopefully it's not one of those, like, super heavy on the puree. Uh, it's like orange-yellow. Yeah. It's got a decent head sticking around on top, a lot of small bubbles to it, which, pretty common for sours. And this is, should we, should we, (laughs) should we say what this is supposed to taste like? What the guy at the liquor store told no, us? No, okay. no, no. We'll, we'll say it afterwards, but it smells it amazing. It smells exactly what the guy, like the guy told us. It smells so good. It smells so good. It's like very orange, very guava. My only problem with the nose is it doesn't smell like a beer. Sure. So if it tastes the way it smells, and it does smell like it could be too sweet too, mm. we might have a problem if it tastes exactly yeah. the way it smells. The, the flavors coming through are great. I, lo- I do love the smell from that perspective. You're getting the passion fruit. You're getting the orange. You're getting the guava. It is very tropical. Yeah. It is like straight fruit salad. It's so fruity. Unbelievably vibrant. And I, can I just say what it's... What it's okay, fine. Go so ahead. the guy at the liquor store convinced us to buy this because it's a, he said it tastes like an orange Tic Tac. Well, we were already looking we at it. We were looking at it. And we he's were like, already looking at it. And he's like, it's it. really good. It tastes like an orange Tic Tac. And I'm like, that sounds really interesting. And it smells like an orange Tic Tac taste. Yeah, it kind of does. And, you know, 
interesting fact. Well, maybe not interesting, but a fact about me. I used to eat orange Tic Tacs a lot when I was younger. Yeah, who didn't? Like, I'm talking, like, high school, yeah, a little sure. bit into college. Like, I was all in on orange Tic Tacs. Loved them. Do they still make orange Tic Tacs? I feel like... Probably. I feel like I haven't seen them, but I guess I also haven't been looking for them. Yeah, you haven't been looking. But this smells amazing. Yeah. I don't smell any booze, but I am concerned that it could be too sweet. But we'll find out. Oh, that's more sour than I thought it would be. It does taste like an orange Tic Tac. It's not sour in my... It's more tart. It's kind of a heavier tart, though. Like, it's a heavier tart. I, like, my first sip, I got that, like, lemony note that you get from, like, legit sour beers. I don't think it's too sweet at all. Oh, man. My second sip, I got a really heavy note of that naked Cheerio. Did you get that? No, not yet. Take a sec. Did you already take a few? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Did the Chessie's girl hit you too hard? <laughs> yeah, I'm drunk already. Is that, is that what's happening? Um, I'm still just, like, surprised because it's more tart than I thought. It's not yeah. too sweet. Mm-hmm. And it still reminds me of a beer. So I feel like that's yeah. like kind of a win in all those categories. Yeah, it's still got that beeriness to it. Yeah, it's not too sweet because that level of tartness really balances out the sweetness because there is a good sweetness there. So they did a good job with the balancing there. The flavors are coming through, just mm-hmm. like in the nose. The passion fruit, the guava, the orange. Mm-hmm. Uh, really tasty. It definitely is. Tastes like what you would expect. It does taste which like. I always like that. I always like when I'm drinking what I think it, I, it should taste like. It is like an orange Tic Tac, though. It, I can definitely understand why he <laughs> gave it us really that description. Is. Are you getting the naked Cheerio, though? No, I'm actually not. I get it on the back end, like the very end. And especially if you just kind of, like, don't take another sip and just kind of, like, move your mouth a little bit. Like, get some more air in there. I'm still not getting it. Hmm. I weird. do like it. I I'm really, definitely getting it. This is, this, it's good. These it's are good. two really good beers. I don't know how to pick because they're both so different. Uh, going from the, the, um, Vice to the Chessie's Girl, I taste more, way more alcohol. Oh, yeah. Because oh, it's man. taking it's taking the sweetness out of it. Because there's a lot of sweetness in the vice, it's taking the sweetness out of what you perceive in the Chessie's Girl. It makes the Chessie's Girl taste like poo. Yeah, it does. So I'm actually kind of interested to see how it goes the other way. Hmm. I want to do that. Let me try this real quick. I don't want to waste my Chessie's Girl like that. Okay. That was a regular sip of the Chessie's Girl. Tasting good. And then the vice... It makes the vice more sour. There we go. Yeah. It kind of sends the sourness, like, over the top. Um, I'm going to do an experiment. Ooh. No, don't do we it. We haven't done this. Hold on. We don't haven't done do this it. in a while. He's mixing them. We haven't done it in a while. This is so gross. I would never do this. I'm not doing I'm not doing a half and half. It's not half and half. It's like 25-75, um, vice 75. That can't be good. It is. Try it. It's good. It just adds a little, little like, maltiness, like, extra maltiness to it. It does downplay the Naked Cheerio note that I was getting, which is fine with me because I'm not a big fan of I mean, of that, it's but. not bad, but I prefer both beers by themselves. Yeah, I get that. But it's still not bad. Yeah. Mixing them. I was just curious. We haven't done that in a while. I just get curious. About I know these you things. like to do that. I like to get mad sciency sometimes, yeah. but okay. So you gotta you gotta pick. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, I have mine. Do you have yours? Uh, I'm gonna go off of what impressed me the most for my. I'm going Chessie's Girls, my number one, just because for that style. I think they did a really good job, especially making it, like, kind of light and refreshing Mm -hmm. with the dark notes. Uh, There was a lot of complexity to it, and you cannot perceive it as 9% either. Although, it was really a hard choice. I agree. I agree with you. I also am picking Chessie's Girl. Oh, nice. Um, It's... (sighs) I hate to say this, but, like, sours are such, like, a dime a dozen. That's true. No, it's true. Um, It's true. Especially Pog ones. It 
also becomes harder to impress me with sure. sours. Like, sure. I don't know. I mean, I still really like it. Yeah. Um, these are both very good beers. Um, Chessie's Girl, like Carlin said, like hiding the ABV, the flavors. Um, I just think they did a nicer job. Yeah. But both winners, really. Oh, yeah. Because they're both very nice. So I would definitely recommend both of these. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Um, let's do the things. Uh, if you want back episodes of the podcast, you can go to BrutalBattle.com or go to Archive.org and just search Brutal Battle. Do us a favor. Um, subscribe. Subscribe to us. Uh, and whatever podcatcher you're using to listen to us, rate and review. Uh, word of mouth is a big thing as well. Just tell people about the podcast if you like it. And if you're listening, I assume you probably do to some degree. You can email us if you want to say something or have any ideas for episodes or certain beers you want us to try or new formats you want us to try, whatever. BrutalBattlePodcast at gmail.com. We're on Untapped. I'm Carlton Malibu, all one word. I'm RubyReb62. And then Instagram? Brutal Battle Podcast. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's it. So thank you everyone for continually listening, or I guess some people this may be the first time. So welcome. And stick with us, because we have a good time. We've been doing this for 11 years now, yeah, which is very odd. But uh, thank you, everyone. We appreciate the support. And until next time, keep it brutal. Keep it brutal.